Well, first off, I'd like to thank our entire uh, coaching staff, uh, tireless hours spent on the road recruiting, visiting families in their homes, spending time away from their own families. I'd also like to thank the uh, secretaries, Mona, Norma, and Donna, for all their work that they put in with the recruiting process. And I'd also like to thank uh, Gabe Franklin. Uh, this was Gabe's first year as our recruiting coordinator. He took over from Ryan Nacken, who did an outstanding job for us in the past. And, and Gabe's really assisted in putting together a, a great class. Um, I'm really not into stats or those type things, um, especially when it comes to star ratings. Uh, I have a very strong view about that, but I saw something interesting the other day. In the Super Bowl, which was probably one of the best Super Bowls ever with two great teams, the combined starters in this year's Super Bowl, there were zero five-star Wow. Athletes. Zero. And combined starters in the Super Bowl, there were more non-rated and two-star athletes playing in that game wow. than there were the three and four stars. So that just gives you what my opinion of star rating means. It doesn't mean anything. So uh, it's all about finding the right fit. It's all about finding the right type of players. And really, we're excited about today, but you really can't judge this class until about two or three years down the road. But I kind of want to go through our first class that we signed in 2013, and you tell me if we're recruiting the right type of player. This was our recruiting class in 2013. Aaron Jones, Darren LaFosse, Jamil Showers, Will Hernandez, Derek Elmendorf, Alvin Jones, Devin Cockrell, Nick Usher, Nick Gaithright, Jamil Irving, Jay Maddox, and Chris Thomas. Those guys are all starters on the 7 5 ball team. Our hope is next year we're up here announcing a new class and talking about the 2014 class that we signed. If we can hit on 10 to 12 guys a year, that's going to elevate this program to new heights. It's not about star ratings. It's not about what the media thinks about who we've signed. It's about what we think about who we've signed because we're the one that's put the homework into it. All right? We've signed 22 players today. They're all on the boat. They all signed their scholarships this morning. They're all official. Uh, we always say, stated that our recruiting process starts in the El Paso area. Well, we've signed five El Paso area uh, student athletes. Uh, one from the Las Cruces area, and I'll review those players as we go through. Our, our recruiting starts here in town. Now, I do understand, you know, you're going to come, come across occasional instances where a player wants to leave town or go to another school. We wish them luck, but it ain't going to be due to our lack of recruiting of those type of players. Uh, we signed 11 offensive players and 11 defensive players. We signed 10 linemen. Get used to it, because that's what we're going to do every year. Uh, we're going to be a physical team. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to go out there and we're going to sign linemen. We signed five offensive linemen and five defensive linemen. Uh, we went all over the country to find players. We found eight players from, from Texas. Again, as I mentioned, five players from El Paso, six from California, two from New York, and then one from each state of Arizona, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, New Mexico, and Washington. We will go anywhere to find the right fit for UTEP Niners. Uh, we signed 17 high school players. That will always be what we want to do. We want to sign high school players, and we want to develop them. We signed four junior college transfers, and that will always be our maximum. Uh, we sometimes have needs in certain positions that we have to fill. We have to find the right character type of people when we're looking for a transfer. And we did sign one transfer from the University of Texas, which will, which will begin the start of our class. But the players that we've recruited here, fellas, uh, have led this team to the first winning season in, in nine seasons, a bowl game, the highest GPA in school history, and the highest academic progress report, the APR report, in school history. This program is going nowhere but this way. I'll start with our recruiting class this year, highlighted uh, by one of El Paso's own, uh, MJ McFarland. He is a transfer from the University of Texas, and he contacted us uh, during the offseason 
Basically, he wanted the chance to be the guy. Well, MJ is going to get his chance to be the guy. He's an extremely talented athlete. He's got great size, athleticism, but more importantly, this is a great kid. He's got outstanding character. Uh, he played 36 career games with eight starts at the University of Texas. This is not a guy that rode the bench in Texas. This guy played. He had at least one reception in eight games last year for the Longhorns. In El Dorado, he was the school's all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, touchdowns, and points. He was the El Paso Times All-City Offensive MVP, and he was first team All-Texas High School Football by Dave Campbell. But here's what I like about this guy. He was a two-time academic All-Big 12 recipient, three-time member of the Big 12 Commissioner's Honor Roll, and out of high school, he was ranked as the 14th ranked tight end in the country, MJ McFarland. Stoll always wants us to throw the ball to tight end. I think we got a guy we can throw it to. Go to that. One thing I didn't mention, he's an outstanding blocker as well. Okay, the next young man that I'd like to talk about is another tight end. He's from the Seattle, Washington area, Bothell High School. Uh, this guy is 6'4", 235. His name is Cole Ford. This was a very athletic, productive tight end, and he's got a nasty blocking edge, as you'll see on film. Uh, he led the Cougars to a perfect 14-0 record, and they claimed the Washington State title. As a senior, he played 11 games. He had 28 receptions for 583 yards, one touchdown. But here's what I like. Well, it's on defense, he had 16 and a half sacks and he averaged 12.7 yards after contact as the tight end. That means he's tough. He was named all King County and all USA Western Washington. He was the fastest clock guy at the Northwest Elite Nike Camp. He ran a 4740 at that size, and he played in the Burger King State Championship Bowl versus Boca, Boca Raton, where they take some of the top teams in the country. Bothell was ranked 15th, and they played number six, Miami Central. This is a great gift for us. This is a quality tight end, and he's gonna, he has the frame to grow into probably a 255, 60 pound player. Cole Ford. Next young man I'd like to talk about is from here from El Paso, Texas. He played at Eastwood High School. Uh, extremely gifted, athletic, talented puller. I think this guy could play guard or tackle for us. You'll see on the film, he's extremely fluid for his size. He's six foot four, 290 pounds. Greg Long played at Eastwood High School. Played offense and defensive line. He was all city first team. He played the El Paso All-Star game and there's not a lot of stats to draw for offensive linemen, so I'll just let the film speak for itself. Greg Long from El Paso. That's a stat, that's a butt whip.
I know this doesn't excite the normal fan, but it excites the heck out of me. <laughs> this is the only school where the lineman's highlights are longer than the other guy. <laughs> the next young man is also from here in El Paso. He went to America's High School. This is a very physical player. He reminds me a lot of Derek Elmendorf, who we signed out of Franklin High School here in El Paso. This guy's a baller. He's very physical. He's got great size. He's six foot three, 325 pounds in high school. His name is Marcos Lujan. mother works for the math department here at UTEP. <laughs> the, the next young man is from Cannondale, Texas. Uh, he's very intriguing. This guy played uh, basketball in high school. He also threw the shot and discus. Uh, he played tight end, and he's six foot six, three hundred and ten pounds. This guy is an extremely athletic, big frame, offensive tackle. He's going to play tackle for us at UTEP. He's got room to grow. In high school, he played tight end, defensive tackle, and special teams for the Wildcats. He had six receptions for 192 yards and three touchdowns as a 310-pound tight end and guided his team to a 12-1 record. They averaged 55.1 points per game. They were doing the right things on offense. Uh, Logan Barrett, who's one of our graduate assistants, his father is the high school coach, Eric Kennedale. He was named All-State Honorable Mention to the Texas Telegram Super Football Team. He was All-District First Team, and he also took first place in the shot in, at the track and field competitions at his district as well. Very gifted player, Chance Fisher. Athletic, watch this clip. This is him at tight end. 310 pounds. <laughs> the next offensive lineman is from Bakersfield, California. He's got great size and physicality. This guy's a punishing run blocker. He's 6'4, 290 pounds. Ruben Guerra, hopefully I said that, I've been working on that. Um, he played offense and defensive line. He helped Liberty High School to a 10 and three mark overall. He was all conference first team. He created holes and paved ways for the rushers to gain 2,442 yards. We're a very run prominent offense. When we watch film, we're looking for guys that can row great, can run block, and this guy can do that. Um, he's got a great frame, he's got room to grow. Ruben Guerra. Now, we didn't just sign Lyman now. Uh, we graduated two wide receivers last year, so we had to fill a need. Uh, we signed two junior college wide receivers. Actually, both of those young men are already here on campus taking classes in the spring. Elliot Oldham, he's from Detroit, Michigan. He went to Minnesota West Community College. 
He's a good sized receiver. He's 6'3, 195 pounds. He's very long, long armed. He's very fluid. The thing about the like about him, he's very competitive. He's very physical. He led their team last year in receiving yards, receptions, and touchdowns. He was also their leading scorer overall. He also returned kicks. He was named all conference for his junior college. The thing I loved about him, this is interesting, he went to Ferndale High School in Detroit. As a safety in high school, he led his team in tackles as a junior and a senior. There ain't many receivers are gonna do that. That just tells you what type of toughness that this guy has, and he competes. Elliot Oldham. Next young man is uh, a smaller receiver. He's also a punt returner. He led all junior colleges last year in punt return average. Uh, now, there's a long story behind this, but we weren't gonna sign a punt return receiver, especially a smaller slot receiver. But every time I walk by Coach Nacken's office, he's like, Coach Cooper, you got a minute? I just wanna show you this punt return receiver. I'm like, the same one you showed me six times last week? He's like, yeah, just one more time. And he'd show me. Well, the guy not only grew on me, uh, he's a special talent. This guy is dynamic, he's explosive. Uh, you look for certain things as a returner. Uh, this guy's got the wow factor. I think you'll see that on film. Uh, he led his team in receptions at his junior college at Glendale Community College. He's here on campus right now. He's 5'10", 170 pounds, Terry Juneal. He had 407 yards receiving. He had three touchdowns on special teams, 14 kick returns for 315 yards, 14 punt returns for 467 yards, and four touchdowns. Not only now do we have the best kick returner in the nation, I feel like we've added one of the best punt returners in the nation. He was named Western State Special Teams Player of the Year. He had an 86 yard touch, a touchdown and a win over Eastern Arizona. He was a junior college All-American in all conference special teams. Terry Janiel. tell the punt returners when they catch the ball to put their foot in the ground, take one step and get vertical. I think that's kind of out the window with this guy. It's more like a joystick run. I'll tell you right now, he's going to drive me nuts with those returns, but I'll take it every time. Um, everybody knows that, that we have uh, one of the best running backs in the nation to have a great stable of running backs, but we always want to add a running back every year. Uh, this next young man is from Los Angeles, California. He was his uh, division's player of the year on offense. We also signed his division's player of the year on defense. But this guy's a 5'11", 180 pound speedster. And again, he's energetic, he's elusive, he's fast, and uh, 
He's got a very exciting running style that I think the minor fans are going to like. Tyrone Nelson from Los Angeles, California, University High. When he sat in my office, all he did was smile. I kept looking at him. Can, can you stop smiling? He's got a lot of energy. touchdowns, but again, here's what I love. 104 tackles on defense as a safety, 10 pass breakups, two forced fumbles, and two fumbles recovered. That means he's tough. He posted nine games over 100 yards rushing and four over 200 yards rushing. On defense, he registered eight performances with five or more tackles. He was named 2014 Western League Offensive Player of the Year in conference first team. Tyrone Nelson. The next young man I want to talk about, you talk about energy, uh, this kid comes from a great family. Uh, his father is a running backs coach at New Mexico State. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story. We we're sitting in the airport, Coach Stoker and I were, were flying back from recruiting, and I see this guy coming at me with a New Mexico State shirt on. And I'm kind of like bracing, like, oh, here we go. This is going to be a fight. Right now. And uh, it happened to be Kabika's father. And after visiting with him for about a half hour, it just tells you what, what a great family they are. The, the family came on the trip for the for the visit, and his mom is awesome. Just a, this kid is energetic, he's elusive, he's got a strong arm, unbelievable athlete, and a great competitor. Uh, I'm gonna kinda go through his stats. He played four years of varsity football at Las Cruces Mayfield High School. He's six foot one, 205 pounds. He led them to an 11 and two record. They were state runner up this year, and they were the state champions as his junior year. As a senior, he threw for 2,000 yards and 17 touchdowns with only three interceptions. I like that. He ran for 180, 182 times for 1,555 yards and 23, school, uh, 23 scores. He set the school record in total offense. He earned multiple spots in their Mayfield record book, becoming the all-time career leader with 4,081 yards and all-time total offense leader with 7,831 yards. He led them to the 2013 state championship. He was back-to-back -back district offensive player of the year, two-time all-district first team. He was all-state two years in a row, and he was rookie of the year in the state of New Mexico. He also plays basketball. I love those dual sport guys for their, for their basketball team. He was real excited when Coach Stoker and I went to visit him at the school because he got to get out of basketball practice, and those guys were running. So this kid is pure energy, I think, as a quarterback. He's the only quarterback that we signed this year. Uh, I think the minor fans are going to love this player for a long time. Kavika Johnson. And he's not a little guy. He's 6'1", 205 pounds. Just like Terry's going to drive me nuts with his returns. With the quarterback, I like them catching the snap and getting the ball out of their hands right now. I think that's kind of out the window with Kavika. Vika Johnson. I 
have to say, it didn't, it didn't even go into our thought process that his dad coached at New Mexico State. That wasn't the reason we recruited this young man. We recruited him because he was the best player in the state of New Mexico, and he came from an outstanding family, and we're just extremely uh, excited to have him. Uh, the next young man comes all the way from Buffalo, New York. Uh, he played on the state championship, Canisius High School. Uh, this guy could go in a lot of different directions when he gets here. You'll see it on film. He's an outstanding fullback. He's an outstanding linebacker. He's six foot one, 225 pounds. He's a very physical, hard-nosed, blue-collar player. Extremely productive career. He was three-time All-Western New York Football Player of the Year. Uh, he recorded 130 yards rushing on 34 carries, five touchdowns a senior year, and on defense, he tallied 91 tackles, 19 tackles for loss, three interceptions, including a pick six, eight passes defended, two forced fumbles, and one and a half sacks. This guy is a very productive player on both sides of the ball. Brad Zaffron from Buffalo, New York. I knew this guy was tough when we went to his home. He had pit bulls locked in the cage. I said, you want to let them out? He goes, you don't want me to let those out. college transfer. He'll be here, here on campus in May. He's from Globe Institute of Technology in New York. This guy is six foot three, 337 pounds. Uh, I think if you watch over the years, some things that have been lacking up front is size. And we wanted to recruit size at the tackle position. Well, this guy's got it. Last season, he recorded 34 tackles, six for losses, one and a half sacks. He led the team in tackles for losses two straight years. He had nine tackles and three tackles for loss against Navy's uh, JV. He tallied five performances of five tackles or more, and he played high school. He's from Orlando, Florida. That's his original hometown. Demarcus Womack. Watch this guy move for his size. here on campus. He's a junior college transfer named Sky Logan. He's six foot two, 285 pounds. He's from Hines, Mississippi, junior college. This guy is extremely athletic. In high school, he was all conference in football, basketball, and baseball. And he's a defensive lineman. He's quick interior lineman. As a freshman in junior college, he registered 34 tackles, two interceptions and a sack, and led him to a seven and three. In high school, he had 91 tackles his senior year, three fumbles recovered. He played in the uh, North-South Mississippi All-Star Game. And as I mentioned, all conference in football, baseball, and track. Sky Logan, or excuse me, baseball and basketball. Sky Logan. Put up the, the, the Denzel's uh, name. Okay, last year we signed a, a lineman named Chris Misala Alafua. I call him Big Chris. Well, as you can see by the last name there, Denzel, I already told him on the phone today, from now on he's Big D. All right? I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. He's six foot four. 
295 pounds from Rockwall Heath. This guy is an athletic, explosive, physically imposing presence. He also played football and basketball at 6'4", 295 pounds. This guy's got a huge frame. Uh, he's going to be a 315 pounder when it's all said and done. And he's been productive. 38 tackles, two forced fumbles, four sacks, one interception, five tackles for losses. He was all district first team, and as I mentioned before, uh, he was all district uh, 2013 boys basketball, second team all district. Denzel, big D. <coughs> Tips this ball and intercepts <coughs> hmm. That excites me too. And coach. <laughs> Texas right outside of Austin. He's a good sized defensive lineman. He could be an interior guy or an exterior guy. He's extremely quick, productive. This guy also played football and basketball, and he's a very talented pass rusher. Uh, Gene Hopkins, 6'3, 245 from Elgin, Texas. He recorded 146 tackles, 25 tackles for losses, 10 sacks, 9 hurries, 3 pass breakups, 3 forced fumbles, and 1 block punt during his high school career. That's production right there. Uh, he also was named All-District First Team and played four years on the varsity basketball team, Gene Hopkins. He also, like Tyrone Nelson, was player of the year in his conference. He was part of an unbeaten basketball squad. So this is another guy that's a dual sport athlete that plays football and basketball. Um, get a little nervous because I think Coach Floyd's going to probably come over here and try to talk me into letting these guys do a little bit of both. But this guy is a long, smooth, very quick athletic pass rusher. He's six foot five, 235 pounds, Foster Dixon. He played defensive end and tight end. He had 10 sacks this year, eight tackles for losses. This is interesting, four block field goals, which tells you a little bit about his length and jumping abilities, and one fumble return for a touchdown. He's, uh, he blocked three career field goals, his, uh, excuse me, three field goals his junior year. He led his team in sacks full season. He was first team all city, and as I mentioned, defensive player of the year, Foster Dixon. Next young man is a linebacker with great size and length, 6'3", 200. He could probably put on a little bit of weight. Once he does, he's going to be a special player. He's extremely fast, explosive. This guy's got great blitzing ability. He's got a knack for the football. He's got great statistics in high school, matched 105 tackles, 
eight set, uh, tackles for loss, six sacks, one forced fumble, one blocked field goal, and led the, the team with 13 quarterback carries and recorded a career high 17 tackles in one game. That was this year, not over his career. Jason Van Hook from Paris, California, Citrus Hill High School. Time ago, from a coach I worked with named Charlie Bailey here at Utah, and he always talked about recruiting defensive backs. And he's always telling me, "Coons, if the defensive backs you recruit can walk under the table, that ain't a good thing." So I've always kept that in mind. I think when you see these defensive backs, uh, they're all over six feet tall, and we're looking for defensive backs that are long and can play our man coverage system that Coach Stoker incorporates. The next young man is Kalon Beverly. Uh, he's six foot one, 175 pounds from New Orleans, Louisiana, Edna Carr High School, very prominent high school down there. This guy is a dual sport athlete, but this is a guy that's going to not only play football here at Utah, he's going to run track. Uh, he ran a 53.46 in the 400 meters at the Carl Lewis High School Invitational, and he's a member of Edna Carr's 4x200 and 4x400 relays. This guy can run. He also very productive on defense, 26 tackles, 6 pass breakups, 2 interceptions as a senior, and he was first team all-conference and led his team to the state championship. Kalon Beverly. Next young man is from Paris, California, Citrus Hill High School. He's a cornerback. Uh, it's interesting about this guy. He was a high school quarterback and cornerback. Uh, we're going to play him at quarterback, but he, he came to our, our camp and worked out as a, as a corner, and we really liked what we saw. Uh, he's got great feet. He's got great athleticism and size, and we're going to put him at a position where that can shine. Uh, this guy was also a football track athlete. Uh, during his senior campaign, he led his team to an 11-2 record. That means a lot to me, a quarterback that's productive. Uh, and he threw for 2,100 yards and 20 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. As a junior, as a cornerback, he notched 2 interceptions and 1 tackle for loss. He was inland area honorable, honorable mention and was also a member of their track team, Jarrell Brown, cornerback.
Next young man, Michael Lewis from Trinity, Texas. Uh, a good sized DB is just a shade under six foot, 170 pounds. This guy was a very productive multi-position. This guy played quarterback, running back, and defensive back. He was also a four-year basketball player. This kid's got great character. He came on a visit during the season and committed to us. Uh, he posted 71 completions for over 1,000 yards as a quarterback, 47 receptions for 618 yards as a receiver. He had 110 tackles and 26 total touchdowns during his senior campaign. 73 times for 471 yards as a running back. So basically, they let this guy do a little bit of everything and did it all well. He's going to play defensive back for us, Michael Lewis. young man is from El Paso, Texas. He played at East Lake High School. Chris Barnwell. Uh, you see he's listed as an athlete because to be honest with you, I don't know what this guy's going to play. All I know is this. This guy's a football player. He comes from an outstanding character family. His family is military. They were on the visit last weekend. Fell in love with the kid. This guy's extremely productive in high school. He had 89 tackles, 23 tackles for losses. That's unbelievable. Seven sacks, 50 quarterback hurries. I like that. Two pass breakups and a fumble recovery uh, during his senior season, two forced fumbles. He was in the El Paso All-Star Game. He's a very long, explosive athlete. He's about six foot two, 190 pounds. I think if he gets in the weight room, he can turn into a linebacker. He can turn into a pass rushing defensive end. He's fast enough to play safe. And so uh, much like a player we signed two years ago that we didn't know what we were going to do with him, Alvin Jones. I think everybody see how he turned out. We're hoping that this young man can do the same. Chris Barnwell from East Lake High School in El Paso. I want everybody to know this. Those are some impressive highlight tapes of these young men. But know this, before we even turn the film on, we got to have a high school transcript in hand, and we're looking for guys that have a burning desire to get a degree. That's first and foremost. We don't even look at the film until we have that. And the second thing we do after that is we get character references, not only from his coaches, but from opposing coaches. We want to know what type of kid that we got. And then we have them on a visit, we visit them in the home, we meet the families, we encourage the families to come here on the visits, and more often than not they do, where we get to know these guys firsthand. Because the type of young men that we want to bring in to the University of Texas El Paso are guys that have a burning desire to get a degree. Uh, when I walk in that home, I don't promise playing time, I don't promise jersey numbers, I don't tell these kids they're going to play in the NFL, I don't tell them they're going to start. But I do look their parents in the eye and tell them they're going to get their degree while I'm the head coach here. That's my number one obligation as a head coach here, is to make sure these young men I'd like to thank Coach Stahl and Kim for being here, my wife Patsy, uh, Dr. Natalicio, for giving me the support that we need to have a successful football program. It just ain't coaches, it just ain't players, fellas. It all comes from the top, and I got the best support up top that you can get. Thank you.